Welcome back to the channel and another episode on using mass transit with Kafka. In this episode, I'm going to go into a deep dive on how mass transit has made Avro union message type support possible. And as I said in the previous episode, this could really be applied to any serialization format, but I'm focusing on this on Avro because with Kafka, Avro is I mean, yes, there's a ton of JSON. J people love JSON. It's big and fluffy and all that. But Avro is super tight. It's super compact, binary, small, fast, all those things you think about. This is how I've been able to support union message types with Avro. So I'm going to focus on that in this episode because I feel like this talks a lot about middleware and things that people have asked about. So if we remember from our demo, we have a warehouse event that has three different message types that are possible in it. And I'm going to look at the actual generated code for this event, which is an Avro record. And we can see there's a number of different properties, but the object type of event is the one that I'm going to narrow in on. And the way the Avro deserializer works is it will actually look at the one of declaration and say, whatever this is, I'm going to deserialize it, and I'm going to set this object property to an instance of that type, which is just another Avro contract. So if I'm looking at the generated code here for like warehouse event, I know that that can be one of product picked, product received, or container ship. And these are all the specific types that fit into that warehouse event property called event. And so when I configured that in the program, I had created this extension method, use Avro union message type filter. And I, a lot of those names make sense because when you see how the middleware works, all of those little keywords in there like message type and filter are gonna really resonate. So in this extension method, I'm specifying the outer message type, in this case, the warehouse event, and the property that I'm going to switch off of, for lack of a better phrase, the event property, which is that object. Now, what does this extension method do? If you look at the middleware guide and have ever written middleware for mass transit, you know that it's all about pipe specifications and adding filters and all that fun stuff. What this is going to do is, for the consume pipe configurator, which all receive endpoints, topic endpoints, whatever, support this interface or implement this interface, I'm gonna allow a particular outer message type to be specified and a, a func that's going to allow me to select out a property and then see if that is another message type. And I'm gonna add this as a pre-pipe specification. So normally add pipe specification is used. In this case, it's a pre-pipe specification because I want it to go against the consume context before any message type routing has been done. So in the message consume pipeline, consume context is routed first, and then there is a dispatch router that says for all the different types that that message can be, it will fan those out to the appropriate consumers, sagas, anything that is processing particular message types, it builds out a pipeline for all of those different types. And because we are intercepting and supporting more than just the outer type of the message, we need to be before that type router because that type writer is gonna ask us if we support that message type with whatever's on the wire in that consume context. So this is just how we configure that in the pipeline. And I've created a specification, which is what we need to have that's added to that particular pipeline. So I'm saving that property selector, which is just a func that takes the input type, which in our case is warehouse event, and expects an object property type to be returned. And I'm saving that selector. By registering the specification, we are telling mass transit, when the pipeline is built, apply me to that pipeline using that pipe builder. So the pipe builder is a pretty simple interface. It literally just has an add filter. I mean, it's it's purely a network of pipes and filters. Um, I don't do any validation right here. I could do validation and say, if property, whatever, you know, whatever I want and yield return errors if I wanted to, like I could say, if property selector is null, then yield return this dot failure. And I could say, you know, property must be specified, something like that. 
But again, not the point of this exercise, I'm not going to cover into that. But what's going to happen is apply is going to be called as the inbound consume pipeline is built. And this is where we're going to add our filter, which is the Avro Union message type filter. So what does this filter look like? The filter, any filter in mass transit, in this case, we're taking the consume context because we don't know a message type yet. As the consume context is routed through the consume pipeline, it's going to be passed. The send method is going to be called and the next filter, in, the next pipe in the filter chain is going to be specified as part of that method. Now, because nothing is really happening at this point, what I need to do is I need to actually proxy that consume context so that I can do some things and override some of those properties. So I'm going to create a proxy pass in the existing context that came in and my property selector, and then I'm just going to return next.send. I mean, I could await this if I was async awaiting, but that just creates an extra stack frame. And I'm just going to return next. I don't need to catch any exceptions, simple as can be. I add a probe to say, hey, this is my Avro filter, so that if I do a show diagnostics, it will, or show configuration, it will show my filter with a name on the consume pipeline. But then I'm going to create this Avro consume context property. All of the things leading up to this one type have been the setup to get this into the pipeline so that when message types are asked for, we can intercept that behavior. So the Avro consume context proxy in inherits from consume context proxy, which is a base type to be used for proxies that don't require a particular scope. So this is basically just an inline filter. It keeps the state unchanged and doesn't create any scope. There's also a consume context scope, which actually creates a new payload scope, which is useful for cases where you might be fanning out or retrying or things like that, and you don't want baggage between attempts to be carried around. So something to think if you're writing middleware. I don't need any of that. All I need to know is that if I can get a message, I'm gonna return it to the person. So remember, the T Avro type for the registration that I've done is that warehouse event. And I have that property selector. Now, one of the messages that's in, one of the methods that's in the consume context is try get message. And this allows us to check and see if a message type is supported by the incoming message. And if it is, it returns a consume context of T, which has all of the consume context data plus the message that's being written out. So the first things first, we're gonna call base.trygetMessage, and if it's already in there, we're just gonna return true. This will pass through if they ask for a warehouse event, it'll pass through no matter what. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is if we didn't get the message supported out of the box, we're gonna say, hey, do you have the message type I want, that outer type warehouse event? And if you do, tell me, because I'd like to do something with it. So if it does support that message type, we're going to go ahead and try to use that property selector, which again, is just a funk T Avro of object against that message that came back from that try get message. If that property is of type T, which is being requested here, which is what it's gonna be like product pick or container shipped if the Saga state machine is listening for it, it's going to then create a new message consume context passing this as the proxy for that message, and then return true. That's the final piece of the puzzle to make it to where mass transit is able to consume that union type of message where a property can be multiple types. And this prevents us from having to consume the outer type and then have like a switch in our code. Super, especially with state machines. State machines, you don't wanna say, Oh, well, if I have a warehouse event, then if, I mean, that logic is crazy. As it is in the container state machine right now, I'm able to consume those direct event types, product picked, container shipped. I don't even know anything about warehouse event or that this came from a warehouse event. All I know is that I'm consuming these events, which are contained within that Avro union type of warehouse event. So, that's kind of how we built the middleware to support that. And I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting concept of how you can take one message type and expose it as a different message type. Um, 
I think it's super useful. Like I said, Avro union types are super cool and super useful, especially in the Kafka ecosystem. So it was really important that this worked and I'm glad it did. And I didn't have to like go and gut mass transit to do it. I'm using out of the box mass transit. I just put all of this code for the Avro support into my sample project. So deep dive, definitely 300 level stuff when dealing with mass transit, but just you know, kind of shows the flexibility of the consume pipeline, how we're able to intercept things and how we were able to handle that additional message type. So that's it for this episode. Very specific, very tightly focused, but definitely stick around because we've got a little bit more to come in a future episode. Catch you next time.